you're watching the free version of Silhouette Essentials. For projects and footage, head to borisfx.com for the premium download. All right, so here we are back in exercise four. We've done all of our prep work now. So we have different tracking layers. Plus we also have our original arm roto. So the task now is to complete our roto in as simple a way as possible. And that's gonna be by linking our arm roto to our tracking data in some way. We already took a look at stabilizing the viewer and here's where this can get really useful. Instead of choosing an active layer, I'm gonna consciously choose a layer that we've tracked in. I'll, I'll take the, the planar motion tracking data for now. And this is gonna stabilize the viewer around the planar motion tracking data. But stabilizing the viewer isn't enough when we're trying to get this done even faster. The other thing we can do is to bring layers inside of layers. Let's turn off the visibility on my mo mocha tracking data and I'll bring that to the bottom here. And I'll bring my point tracker data to the bottom as well. So we've got the arm roto and the planar tracking data available to us. Let's turn the visibility on on the planar tracking data layer. Now let's see what happens when I drag my arm roto layer into the planar tracking data layer. It nests inside there quite happily. I'll turn off the square we used for tracking and lock it. So now we have the transformations on this planar tracking data layer affecting the arm roto as well. Remember, of course, we've still got the stabilize turned on. So let's play this through. And you can see that that's locking everything down quite nicely. Okay, I'm gonna focus on the forearm here, I think. So let's temporarily turn off all of the other layers and just come to our forearm. And now we're gonna animate this in using the same sort of strategies for manipulating the transform box as we did when we were originally placing the layers. Now, before we add our first keyframe, I'm just gonna say there are several schools of thought when it comes to doing roto work. Some people like to use the frame step option to roto every X number of frames. But at this stage, now I've got everything locked down, what I prefer to do is just look through the footage and find the area where it's gone most out. So the frame of maximum drift, which is this frame here. And at this point, I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna skew that shape back into place. So remember, that's the Alt key here. Now I'm trying to scrub up and down and nothing's happening. Okay, why is that? Well, my shape is unlocked, but my arm roto layer is locked. Let's unlock that. Let's try again. No, nope, still not happening. And the reason for that is also my planar tracking data layer, which everything else is sitting in, is also locked. So there's this hierarchy of locking. And if we don't have everything unlocked, then we aren't able to move the shape around. So like before, we'll work big to small. So I've got most of my major motion going there. And at this point, I can come into my reshape tool and select some control points and move those. And I can even use the arrow keys as well if I need to. Okay, then we're gonna find the next point where it drifts off the most, which actually, boom, boom, probably just the next frame, and we'll do the same thing again. So start big to small, and I can just skew that into place. Let's see again. Same thing again, taking a little look. If I need to come in and change up a couple of control points, I can do that as well. You see, because we've got that motion tracking data, stabilizing out both our viewer and doing most of the work for our arm as well, this is a lot simpler than it might otherwise be. And take a little look at this here. If I go one frame back, you can see my arm actually hasn't moved that much. The animation there sort of stops in the wrong place. So I've actually placed my keyframe at the wrong frame. In the timeline, I can just select it and move it a frame backwards. 
and make any small adjustments, but that fits in pretty much exactly where it needs to. Now, this isn't the full rotoscoping section, so I'm not going to force you to sit through all of the rotoscoping for, for the arm here, but I'll go ahead and just finish off this roto now, and I'll be back when we can focus on the hands. And a short while later, here we are with the roto forearm. And let's play this back in our nice stabilized viewer. If we have a look at the bottom of the viewer, you can see there are quite a lot of keyframes being placed in, but most of those were just very, very small movements. This is the annoying thing about when people manipulate their arm and stretch things like that. Um, you know, there is, is quite a lot of movement in the arm, even though the camera itself is locked down. And final thing, just to check this out, is to destabilize the viewer. And now we see just how much time we've saved from this complicated movement by isolating out the camera itself. In the next segment, we're gonna be taking a quick look at some of the other important roto tools that we haven't covered. And we'll move to finish up our hand roto so we can get going with some of the other good stuff. All right, I'll see you after the break. <laughs> 